Welcome to our course Digital Design with Perilog. In today's class, we continue our discussion on multi-level logic minimization using kernel extraction. These slides are prepared from chapter 6 of Kohavi's book. So, as we have discussed in previous class that given a Boolean expressions, either so far we are used to represent that as a two-level uh, representation is a sum of product representation, right. So, where you have effectively uh, one AND plane followed by the OR plane there are two levels. But we have seen certain scenarios like parity bit uh, uh, parity bit generator or say whenever there are multiple outputs of a uh, design, it is uh, useful to have a multi level representation where instead of having a sum of product form, we have a factored form right. What is factored form is basically recursive sum of product expression right. So, if I take the example here say suppose this is the minimal expression in two level representation and the corresponding two level circuit is this. So, this is level 1, this is level 2. On the other hand, I can rewrite this expression like this which is called factored form right. What is happening here? This is you can think about a uh, sum of product, but one of the term is again a sum of product right. This is a recursive sum of product rep representation and once I represent this as a circuit, I will get this uh, implementation and which has 6 levels right. This is level 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 right. So, this has been discussed in the last class. So, uh, this suggests that uh, if I do this way, the mind literal count will be 11 here and it was 16 in my previous one. As the literal count uh, is proportional to the area that I need to implement this, so this is uh, a better implementation okay. Specifically, when you have multiple output for a given circuit where the inputs are same and you have multiple outputs. Uh, in this case, it is advisable to identify the common sub expression among two outputs and reuse that resource right. To give an example, suppose you have two output is f and f 1 and f 2 and the inputs are u 2 z there are 6 inputs. So, first of all you identify that this u plus w is uh, common in out of this case right. So, what I can do I can compute this separately and I can reuse both in computing f 1 and f 2 just use instead of this uh, u v plus w I will just use f 3, f 3 is my u v plus w. Here also instead of this I will just use f 3 z. Okay. So, this way I can reduce the circuit area and also overall uh, delay some cases ok. So, this suggests that we first have to do the factoring given a sum of product expression, I have to represent this in this form and then once I have the factored form, I have to identify the common sub expression among this uh, two outputs okay, or multiple outputs. And in the last class, we have also discussed that to identify this common sub expression, we have to find out the kernels of a function, Boolean function. What was the kernel? It is basically say that q pre uh, quotient. So, it is basically if you divide that particular function by some uh, single cube right which is called co kernel. Uh, it is a single cube which that means that you have only single product term right. So, it is something says x y. Then whatever the quotient you will get here if this is q free right. So, it is basically q free means does not have any common product term among this right. So, suppose the example is that say x y plus z y plus z or say x y plus w z and so on. Whereas, if you think about x y plus x z this is not q free because you have common product term x right. If you take x y z plus w y z this is not q free because if you you can have a product term y z here x plus w right. So, they are not q free whereas, these are q free. So, these are the kernels. So, the idea was uh, that we have discussed that Bayton McMullen theorem is that you identify all such kernels for given function and then the intersection the actual the common sub expression will be in the intersection of these two function right. Just to think about this so suppose you have a function f and g you identify all possible kernels of f you identify all possible kernels of g you take the intersections and this common sub expression will be there in the intersection of these kernels only ok, which is called multi cubes common divisor. It is basically if you identify a pro common product term you will get this. So, we will go into more detail of this. Just to emphasize how to identify the kernels manually you can do that. Say for example, you have given a product term like this 
uh, if you try to divide this by 1, uh, it is basically your cosine will be this and your remainder is 0, but this is not a kernel because b is common here, right? I can see b in every term. So, I can take b common here. So, this is not a kernel. If I divide this by a, my co kernel is a. So, then I can represent this equation as a into b c plus b d plus b c d. So, this is my remainder, this is my quotient, this is my uh, divisor, but this is again not a kernel because b is common here, right? So, this is not a kernel. If I divide this by b, I will uh, I can represent this like this. So, this is my divisor, this is my quotient, and this is my remainder. And here I can see that there is no common variable that I in all this product term. So, this is a kernel, right? So, this is a kernel corresponding to this function f. Similarly, a b uh, if I divide this by a b, I can represent like this, and this is my uh, divisor, this is my quotient, this is my remainder, and there is no common term product term here. So, uh, this is also a kernel, right? So, this this way I can identify these two are the kernels corresponding to this function, right. But the question that we asked in the previous class is uh, given a big function, so we say maybe hundreds of variables, it is not so uh, uh, obvious to identify kernels the way I were discussing here, right. So, we need some automation for this and basically we are going to discuss that this kernel extraction method using a rectangle covering method where we try to construct a matrix uh, and then we try to find identify some rectangle out in there and those rectangle will represent some kernels. Okay. So, that we are going to discuss now. So, our input is a function f which is represented as sum of product uh, which has p cubes. You remember this cubes is basically a product term okay. and there are q distinct literal. Okay. So, what we will construct a cube literal incident matrix which is size is p into q. Okay. So, there will be p rows and q columns and name of that uh, ma that uh, particular matrix is cube literal incidence matrix. As the name suggests, each row will represent the cube because I have p cubes. So, I will have p rows in that uh, in that particular matrix and each column will represent the literals. As we have q distinct literals in my function, I will have q columns. Okay. So, given an example, say so suppose I have a f which is sum of product representation like this. So, I have 4 cubes 1, 2, 3 and 4, 6 distinct literals which is uh, u, v, w, x, y and z. Right? These are the literals. So, I have 6 distinct literals and 4 cubes. Okay. So, in my uh, matrix, uh, I will have 4 rows each of the product term or q will represent each row. So, for example, u z w, u x u x z, y z and u v and each literal will represent a column. So, u v w x y and z. Now, it is important to note I have to fill up these boxes in i j location, right? i j location. i means row i, row i and j is column j right so i either i'll put 1 or 0 based on certain logic right so what i'm saying is that if a literal present in a cube i'll put 1 here if a literal is not present in the corresponding cube i'll put a 0 there okay so if you see here so u present u this is u w z so, corresponding to u, I will put 1, w, I will put 1, right. So, corresponding to u, I will put 1 here in the first row. For w, I will put 1, and for z, I will put 1, and rest of the places, I will put 0 corresponding to the row 1. So, this way, I will also uh, put uh, for u, x, and z 1, and rest of the places 0. So, this way, I will fill up the 1 and 0 for each rows. So, this is my cube literal incidence matrix. Okay. Now, uh, let us define a rectangle in this particular matrix. So, it is basically a subset of rows and columns okay, where all entries are 1. Right? So, I will try to find out a subset of rows and columns uh, where all entries are 1. 
give an example. Say for example, if I take this two row u w z and u x z and uh, column u and z. So, I am going to take only the value of u w z and u x z and column I am going to take u and z. You see here it is 1 here, 1 here, right? 1, 1. You have uh, 1 here, 1 here, right? So, this is a rectangle because uh, this is one rectangle because I have uh, a sub uh, each row and each column I have one corresponding to this. So, this is I define as a rectangle. Okay. Similarly, the rectangle can have only single column also. So, you can think about that this u z w, u x z and u v and corresponding to u that will also construct a matrix because I will have 1, 1 and 1. So, I will get a matrix of 3 is to 1 matrix, this is 2 cross 2 rectangle, this is 3 into 1 matrix because you have u w z, u x z and u v and you have u here and all ones, right? this is 3 rows and 1 column. This way it is easy to identify all rectangles uh, in the uh, in this particular matrix and I will say a particular a rectangle is prime rectangle if it is not contain any other rectangle. right? For example, you think about there is another rectangle possible only u w z, u x z and with u. Right? This is also a rectangle of 2 into 1 because this is a subset of this. So, this is not a prime rectangle, but I do not have any bigger rectangle that will cover this. So, this is a prime rectangle, right? this is not a prime rectangle this is also prime rectangle. So, this way our interesting points are the prime rectangles which is not covered by anybody else. Okay. Next what I am defining is a co-rectangle. So, if I know a rectangle uh, say for example, if you have this uh, the 2 cross 2 that I have taken about u w z and u x z and you have u and z. So, this is a rectangle where I have all 1 the core rectangle of this. So, this is a prime rectangle. right? The core rectangle will basically have the same rows. So, that means, I have u w z and u x z as the row. In the column, whatever the column is missing here that will be there, the complement of the columns. right? So, I have u and z here. So, v w x y these are the columns. So, this is how I will define the core rectangle of this. this is my prime rectangle and this is my co-rectangle. So, this is uh, quite clear. So, for each prime rectangle I can always identify the co-rectangle which is nothing but having the same rows and the column that is not present in this rectangle. right? Next is important. So, now uh, I want to identify the kernels. right? So, and want to identify a kernel what I understood that I have to def, uh, divide this f with some divisor right which is a q free divisor so i have to identify kind of a product term here right and this should be q free right this should be a sub expression basically sum of product expression which is q free in the sense there is no common factor in all of them right so what we are saying that if you find a prime rectangle whatever this value of this. So, let us take the same example u w z and u x z and u z right this is 1 1 1 1. So, this column is basically the divisor or it is basically called co cardinal. So, this columns forms the co cardinal right. So, this u z are the columns. So, I will say this uh, the co cardinal in this case is u z right. So, this is u z and my function is f. I will identify the co kernels corresponding to a kernel by just taking the product of the columns okay. and how do I identify the kernels? It basically it say that you have this rows you basically restrict this with the co rectangle right. So, that means you have this u w z plus u x z you restrict them with only the 
coduct angle terms which is phi w x and y right the coduct angle means the variables that is not present here which is v w x y what does this mean it basically you only keep these variables other variable you remove right so in this case if i just remove that means i have to remove u z u z so it will result in w plus x so i will say this w plus x is the kernel so what effectively it means that if i divide this uh, two product term sum of this two product term with u z i will end up getting my kernel x w but if you look into this it's effectively it's very straightforward if you look into this it's basically you have already said that u w z if u is present there it means one right so it means if you are you are kind of taking a common product term out from these two product term right so u present in both places you are saying z plus z both present that means u z present in both the product term right so that is something i am extracting out and that is becoming my co kernel and rest of the things that remaining is my kernel okay so this way i can easily identify all the kernels in a automated way so if i try to summarize the steps i'll first construct this matrix which is called cube literal incidence matrix then second i'll identify all the prime rectangles then for each prime rectangle i'll identify the co rectangles okay then i for each prime rectangle i will form the product term based on the columns and then if i restrict that product terms for the co rectangle columns i will end up getting my kernels okay so this you can understand that can be automated okay so this allow me to identify all the kernels corresponding to a function but we are discussing about multiple functions because each function represent each output right so that means i need to now uh, find a way to identify the intersections of the kernels again i am going to construct a matrix that will help me again in the similar manner automatically identifying the uh, intersections of kernels because ultimate objective is to identify the intersection of the kernels that will be my common sub expression across uh, multiple outputs okay so uh, for this what we will do is basically we will construct a kernel cube in incident matrix instead of a uh, cube literal incident matrix now i will basically use a uh, i will construct a kernel cube incident matrix which is have the similar analogy corresponding to cube literal incident matrix so what i am going to do is effectively i will try to take the kernels of two functions let's say two functions now but it can be n function also and then i'll represent this kernels with certain variables such that it will again this all kernels will represent as kind of a sum of product with the new variables and then i'll construct that uh, matrix similar analogy of my uh, this cube literal incident matrix okay so then the philosophy will be the same okay let me let me explain that so what i'm going to do so i'm assuming that i have one function say f and g have i already identified the kernel of f and kernel of g using my uh, cube literal incident matrix so i already have this so how how they look like it will be some form like w plus x this is one kernel maybe x z plus y and so on right and this may have say uh, x y plus z and then w plus v and so on right this may be the kernels of this two function so what i'm going to do is now for each product term in the kernels i'll define a new variable okay so for example if you have x it's a product term of a single literal so i'll define a variable ax if i have w i'll define a new variable aw xz i'll define a new boolean variable axz so corresponding to each product term in all the kernels i'll define new variables so how many new variables will come based on the number of product term present in the kernels all kernels okay then i'll represent this uh, uh, this uh, kernel as ax aw okay just a representation nothing else and then i'll construct a new function fa which is effectively uh, a sum of product of all these kernels so this will be represented as 
a x z into a y then this will be represented as, as a x y dot a z plus this will be represented as a w a v right. So, this way I will basically construct a sum of product sum of product expression okay, where each of these variables is basically a boolean variable. So, this construction I hope it is clear. Once I get this it is similar to my this cube literal incident matrix I can always construct a matrix now kernel cube incident matrix from this ok. So, let me show you how. So, given one more example suppose you have a function f this f 2 is this and by my previous method I identify it has two kernels and this has one kernel ok. Then each product term is represented as a new variable right. So, I will represent this as a w a x this is a u w and so on. Similarly, there are three new variable will be introduced and I construct a new function which is basically a sum of product expression for each kernel right. This kernel is this, this kernel is this and this kernel is this the way I explained in the previous slide right. So, once I have this I will now construct a matrix where I will have row corresponding to each kernel ok. So, I will have if three kernels here. So, there will be three rows right. So, there are one kernel, two kernel and three kernels and each column will represent by this new variables right the literals. These are the kind of literals for me now ok. And then if this particular literal present in a kernel I will put one in the corresponding location. So, if it is a w and a w present in kernel 1 I will put 0 and say for a u w it is not present in the kernel 1 I mean this is a kernel 1 this is kernel 2 and this is kernel 3. So, this a w is not present in this. So, I will just put 0 here. So, this way I will construct another matrix ok. So, let me explain again. So, in my example this is the auxiliary function that I have constructed from my all kernels three kernels were there. The first kernel was w plus x since it has w and x. So, I will put a w and a x 1 rest of the things 0. For this kernel I have a u w, a u w is 1, a u x is 1 and a y is 1 and rest of the place I will 0. And then this uh, this is the third kernel which has a w a x and y z will be 1 right a w a x and a y z is 1 rest of the place is 0 right. And I also maintain this corresponding to function 1 this corresponding to function 2. I will keep this data in the this particular matrix. This is called kernel cube incident matrix because I have rows corresponding to kernel and this column corresponding to cubes each cube is represented by a single boolean variable. So, in this case I can again define this prime rectangles right the way you can identify a prime rectangle is again the similar way the way I explain. So, you can think about this and this forms a prime rectangle right. So, this is basically w plus x and uh, w plus x plus y z right and a w and a x it is 1 1 1 1. So, this is one prime rectangle. Once I identify this prime rectangle here I can say that whatever the product terms are 1 it is basically that is the common sub expression I can say w plus x is the common sub expression right. So, if I identify at least uh, there are 2 rows and 2 columns such matrix and then corresponding to the auxiliary variable I can identify what is the common sub expression among this and you can easily identify that this is the common sub expression between these two kernels ok. So, the same example so finally it was uh, if the f 1 was this and for this we have identified two kernels for this we have identified one kernel and then we identify the common sub expression is w plus x. So, I can compute w plus x and I can reuse in this function as well as this function right. So, this way I can simplify this multi output circuit as well ok. I hope this is clear. 
So, just to summarize the steps of kernel extraction in intersections, identify the kernels of each expression first, then introduce a new variable uh, corresponding to the q in the kernels, then the rewrite the kernel in terms of the new variables, form an auxiliary function f a as sum of cubes, then construct the kernel cube incident matrix and then you find the prime rectangle and this prime rectangle corresponding to the intersection. In the prime rectangle whatever the cube present their summation is the common sub expression between these two function. Okay. Just for completeness of this lecture I also talk about this cube extraction. So far we discuss about the common sub identification right this x plus y and so on w x plus y and so on. It may have that if you have a function you may have a common product term as well or a cube right. So, for example, here you can see that w z is kind of a common product term right w z right. So, I can identify uh, rewrite this as f 1 as w z into u otherwise you can think about that w z is the common term here. So, if I compute this is as f 3 is w z then I can write is f 3 u plus u x z plus y z plus u v right. And here also I can rewrite my f 2 as uh, uh, f 3 into y plus v z right. I just reuse this product term. So, instead of common sub expression I can also find out a common product among two functions okay, and then I can reuse that also. And even uh, that can be done using uh, the similar kind of a matrix can be constructed and can be done. Okay. So, let us try to construct a matrix corresponding to these two functions. So, what I am going to do? I am going to construct a cube literal incident matrix again is basically is similar term. So, each product term or each q term will be the row and each literal will be the, the columns. Okay. So, these two function has uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 uh, product terms. So, there will be 6 rows and there are 6 literals u v w x y z. So, there are the columns and in similar way if this u present in this product term I will put 1 here, v does not belong to this. So, I will put 0 here, w belongs to this particular product term 1 here, x does not belong to this. So, I will put 0 here, y does not belong to this product term. So, 0 here z belongs to this product term. So, it is one here. So, this way I will construct this matrix and then again I will try to construct a prime rectangle here. Okay. So, the prime rectangle is basically uh, if you think over here is this and this construct a prime rectangle that means u w z u x z and u and z right. So, then this is a prime rectangle. So, it means that u z is the common cube here right. So, this is the I can rewrite that u w z plus u x z I can write, rewrite that u z into w plus x right. So, this is my common cube that I extracted. Similarly, there may be other possibilities the example one I have taken here is y z and w y z right. So, this is this and this and I can see here uh, z I have uh, 1, 1 here and then for uh, y also I have 1 here right. So, this is also construct a matrix right. So, I can construct a y and z and this will be 1, 1. So, that means for this again the common product term is y z and then you can rewrite this as z plus uh, w right. So, uh, y z uh, is the common term. So, I can uh, identify this is basically 1 plus uh, 1 plus w uh, 1 plus w. So, which is uh, is basically 1 right. So, it will reduce to y z right. So, this way I can again identify the common cube among multiple uh, output and then I can extract them and I can reuse them. Okay. So, uh, as the example I uh, took, so here I identify this y z as the common term and then I rewrite this as I am just using this y z as directly here and I use this uh, y z here for this term which is directly I am using f 3 
and here I am using uh, in place of this. So, it will be like this. Okay. So, this way I, I can also identify the cubes, common cubes among multiple outputs. So, this concludes the discussion of multi-level optimizations using kernel extraction method. Thank you. Thank you.